Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So in the previous video, we spoke about the 59 Chinese apps that were banned. And the one major question that came up was why PUBG wasn't banned. And we have this rising revolt all of a sudden, uh, especially from the parents to get the app banned. As for why PUBG can't be banned, first of all, maybe the government actually banned those apps because they were a threat to our privacy and security. And when it comes to these two factors, the creators of PUBG are really vocal and strict. When I looked into this thing, I also got to know that they have some of the best anti-cheat softwares which can't be hacked easily and uh, very secure. And secondly, like people think, PUBG is not a Chinese app. It belongs to this Korean company called Bluehole Incarnations and Tencent, the Chinese company, owns 1.9% equity stakes in it and also the rights to distribute the mobile version of the game. So that way the game we are playing on our phones are actually belonging into 10 cents and hence the logo at the start of the game and hence all the confusion but just banning the mobile version of the game and letting the pc and the console version stay there won't actually make any sense and will defeat the purpose of banning it uh, in the name of security and privacy so that is also not a possibility which actually shows that it's pretty difficult to get a ban on the game and also that there is no need to get the game banned. And as for the rising reward, the main reason is people getting addicted to the game and spending a lot of cash into that game. But the thing is, we can't actually ban the game for this thing because they made the game to earn money, right? And they don't show any such advertisements and in-app purchases are their way to earn money. And PUBG is not the only game that has in-app purchases. All games and apps, as far as I know, have in-app purchases and people do buy. Just that PUBG is more popular, so more cases, more news. But yeah, these are issues that we have to look into, but can't blame the game. First of all, the responsibility of a parent shouldn't end at just giving the smartphone to the kid. Maybe from the age of 12 to 18, they should have a check on what they are doing on the phone and how much time they are spending on an app and not give their credit card information to them. And I mean these days there are so many inbuilt applications in the phone like parental care in both Android and Apple which makes this possible. And as for the people who play the game and feel that they are into it a lot, they can actually use the digital well-being applications present in the phone. It's called screen time in iOS and digital well-being in Android. It will help you monitor the amount of time you are spending on the phone and even keep restrictions on the phone. And if you feel it's not that useful then you can use this app called app detox i put the link in the description you can check it out i use this app it's really useful it sort of like puts a challenge to not use the app you don't want to use like putting a particular time to use the phone or number of launches etc etc i use the timer thingy and put a restriction in such a way that i can only play the game from 10 pm to 11 pm other than that if at any other point of time i try to open the game it won't open and you sort of get points and rewards to do this thing it's pretty useful you can check it out and still if that is also not enough just take that one moment's courage and delete the app it's a 2 gb heavy game so most probably you'll be short of data and think twice before downloading the game and still if that's not enough and still you feel like you're downloading the game again again and again and you seriously seem to be addicted maybe it will be good to have a talk with your parents counselor uh, because that's some serious addiction so yeah with that i'm coming to the end of this video play more responsibly don't let the game consume you finishing the video bye bye take care peace